This is lab 22 on the dog specimen. So today we're actually moving on to the head and you will remove your head from your cadaver. So you're cutting it off around the fourth cervical vertebrae and you wanted to keep the larynx and the thyroid glands with the head. So just make sure you're keeping that and then cut that. And then you will skin it. So you're going to take the skin off of the whole head. So you're going to remove all the skin, just leaving a margin around the eyes, around the nose, around the lips, and then just the base of the ears. You can leave the pinna. You don't have to skin that. So just skin the base of the ear. So the rest of it comes off, but leave those little margins. And then you're going to have an instructor split your head on the midline. So you won't be doing that, but an instructor will. So then it'll be split in half, so you'll have a left half and a right half. And here I'm going to tip up the dog just a little bit and show you the philtrum. So the philtrum is kind of lost once you split it. But right here, this little groove that goes in between the lips here, that's the philtrum. So if you see that before you split your head, that would be great. All right, then we're going to work on the left side for muscles. So I'm just going to move the right side over here. And depending on how the split is, you may have a better side for some things on one side, and if so, just use that side instead. Okay, so here we're going to start on the lateral side with the platysma muscle. So we've seen this before in the neck. And so you're going to reflect that rostrally, so toward the nose, and you're going to lift it up, and it's this thin sheet of cutaneous muscle. That's the platysma. So you're going to reflect that rostrally like that. Um, one thing that I do want to note on here, also very cutaneously, here you can see these fibers kind of running around the mouth. Those are called the orbicularis oris. And the platysma, which are the straight fibers here, tie right into that. So you can kind of see it sometimes better than others, but here would be orbicularis oris going around the mouth, platysma going straight back. So then we'll reflect that rostrally. Then we have the buccinator muscle. So I'm just going to stick my finger inside the cheek of the dog here. And so that kind of elevates this muscle, the buccinator. So right here. And that kind of is the cheek muscle. And if you put your hand inside, you can kind of lift it up like that. All right, then we have levator nasolabialis. So I'll tip the dog up just a little bit. So levator nasal labialis is the one coming down from the nose here and going to the lip. So it kind of angles like that. So levator nasal labialis muscle. Then we have the eye. So here we have superior and inferior palpebrae. So that's just the upper and lower eyelids. And so those are there and they meet at the commissures. So here you would have a medial commissure where the two eyelids come together and a lateral commissure over here. And in between, so in between the eyelids, the opening is actually called the palpebral fissure. And so when it's closed, you're completing that, the sac for the eyeball, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But when it's open, you can see that there's a space there, and that's the fissure. All right, we also have a muscle that goes around the eye, similar to the one going around the mouth. So here going around, the fibers going around. It's a cutaneous muscle, so sometimes it comes off when you skin, but it's orbicularis oculi, so around the eye. Then we have this little tiny guy here. It's a very long name for a very small muscle. It's retractor anguli oculi lateralis. So right here is that muscle. All right, now we'll go back to what I was talking about was the conjunctival sac. So your eye, when it's shut, completes that conjunctival sac inside. So inside the eye socket here, you'll have palpebral uh, conjunctiva that lines the eyelids. So that's here and here that would be lining the inside of those eyelids. So palpebral conjunctiva. And then that extends onto the eyeball itself which will then be called bulbar conjunctiva. Here you can only see a little bit of it here. But bulbar conjunctiva here, and where they meet is the fornix. So right where that bulbar meets palpebral is the fornix. But that creates the conjunctival sac. So when the eye is shut, 
you can think of it as a complete sac. And so the palpebral and bulbar make up the conjunctival sac. Okay, then we have, so some of these are gonna be a little bit hard to see, and I like to tell people to actually look at your own uh, puncta, your lacrimal puncta in your eye, because it's really hard to see in cadavers. But you'll have a lacrimal caruncle, which is just this little kind of finely haired area right here. And you'll have a dorsal punctum and a ventral punctum. And so you want to look at those, and in your eye, I would just say look in a mirror. And they're the little holes that you'll see in kind of the corners of your eye. So the, those are the lacrimal puncta. All right. And I'm going to just turn them over here. And I've cut a little window right here so that we can actually see, so you won't actually see the nasal lacrimal duct itself, but here, this tiny hole right there, so the scissors are right in the hole, right there, is the opening where the nasal lacrimal duct dumps into the nose here. So right there at the tip of the scissors is that opening. Okay. Right. One other thing to point out on the eye, so what's covering up most of this eyeball right here is the plica semilunaris, or the third eyelid, so that's right here. So it's actually kind of up over the eyeball here. All right, now we'll move on to some auricular muscles, so ear muscles. Here I've reflected them, but these would be rostral auricular muscles, so the muscles connecting to the ear that are towards the nose. So those are rostral auricular muscles. So you're just going to reflect those towards the ear. Then you have these caudal auricular muscles. So right here, attaching caudally on the ear, caudal auricular muscles, and you can just lift those up and reflect them as well. And right here, this kind of whitish yellow spot you see is actually a cartilage. It's the scutiform cartilage, kind of a boot shape, and if you can find it in those muscles, you can just kind of uncover it a little bit. But the scutiform cartilage is there. All right, we're going to move on to the mouth here. So the vestibule is a concept that's kind of difficult sometimes to understand, but the vestibule is actually outside of the teeth but within the lips. So it's right here. So if you think of like puffing up your mouth with air, but keeping your lips or your lips closed, it's going to be the air is going into your lips right here. So that's the vestibule. Then you have the oral cavity proper, which then is inside the teeth here. So oral cavity proper versus vestibule outside the teeth, but within the lips here. All right, then we have the tongue. So here's our tongue, and we'll look at the different parts. So we have a root of the tongue, which is just that caudal third. You have a body, and then you have the apex is this little free part at the end. We have some papillae to identify, which can be pretty small, but we'll try and get the gist of it here. So most of the tongue is covered in filiform papillae. So it's kind of that textured appearance that you see is all filiform except for these little dots that you see all over, kind of interspersed, these white little dots. Those are all fungiform papillae. And I say they look like mushroom tops, just the little bumps here you see interspersed throughout. So those are fungiform, versus the rest of them within there are filiform. Okay. Then we have the conical. As you move towards the root of the tongue, you have conical papillae, which are these. And interspersed in there, you'll have round ones with a moat. And those are valate. Valate papilla right here. There's a little one right there. So sometimes you can see them really well, and sometimes it's a little difficult. But valate are the round ones with the moat. Conical are here. This dog doesn't really have much for foliate. But they're supposed to be kind of along here. And they just are on the edge of the root of the tongue. But foliate should be there. And actually, in the cat specimen, we'll see some better ones. The lysa in the tongue is kind of in the apex here. And if you kind of just slit the mucosa and look on the midline, hopefully you'll find it. My cut actually went right through the lysa, which was kind of nice. So lysa is this little thing right here. Usually easier to see in a dog, sometimes a little difficult to find in a cat. All right, the sublingual caruncle. 
So if you pull this out, here our sublingual caruncle is actually gone, so I'm going to switch to the other head. I'll just show you on this dog right here. So here's the apex of the tongue, and if you just kind of lift it up, here is that sublingual caruncle right here, this little bump. And then the other one for the other side is right here. So sublingual caruncle. This is the frenulum attaching the tongue to the floor of the mouth here. So frenulum. And then the sublingual caruncle, you have a sublingual fold then extending back towards the back of the mouth, going back from that. So it's just sublingual caruncle is here, and extending back the mucosa fold going backwards is going to be that sublingual fold right there. So mine's been cut open to look at the ducts underneath. So if I hold this open, there we go, that's better view. So here is that sublingual caruncle, and the ducts that come in there will be the major sublingual duct right here. So these are salivary ducts. And then this one is the mandibular salivary duct. So I kind of peeled them apart. They're a little hard to dissect apart from each other, but the, this one on the bottom here is going to be mandibular, and this one is the major sublingual salivary ducts. So you just incise the mucosa and look for those. All right, we're going to go back to the lateral side of this one. We're back on the left half here. And here, you're looking for the mandibular salivary gland. So that's the big thing here in between this maxillary vein and lingual facial vein. It kind of sits right there. It's a nice big one. So mandibular salivary here. And then you have to dissect that out away and kind of pull it caudally so that you can see this sublingual salivary gland right here. So this is sublingual salivary glands, kind of triangular shaped right here, versus the mandibular, which is the big oval right here. All right, one other thing to point out while we're right here is the lingual vein. So your maxillary vein here, lingual facial vein is here, and off of lingual facial you'll have a lingual vein. So lingual vein will come down here and then go to the tongue. So right through here you can kind of see where that's diving into the tongue there. So that's the lingual vein. All right, back to the lateral side again. So now we have the parotid salivary to look at. So that one makes a V shape around the base of the ear. So the base of the ear is here, and the parotid salivary is just this right here. It kind of makes a V shape. And then you have the parotid duct that's going across the masseter muscle across the cheek. So right here is the parotid duct. Right. Then we'll move on to the palate, and here we're moving back to the right side because most of my incisive papilla is on this side. So the palate, here's hard palate right here, soft palate back here, but the incisive papilla is just this little nodule right here, right behind your incisor teeth. So incisive papilla, right there, okay. Then we have the pharynx to do. So we have nasal pharynx will be this part here. So nasal pharynx. Then we have the oro pharynx, which will then be here. So oro pharynx. And then you have laryngo pharynx. So larynx is right here. Laryngo pharynx is going to be this space right here. Now in your nasal pharynx, so this is nasal pharynx. You'll have the opening to the auditory tube. So I'm just going to stick the probe in it. So that's the opening to the auditory tube there. And then you also have something called the palatopharyngeal arch. So that's this fold kind of coming back off the soft palate right here. So palatopharyngeal fold. Then in the oropharynx, we have a couple of things to look for. So this little flap I'm going to lift up is the semilunar fold right there. And inside that, you see the palatine tonsil. So here, if I can point to that right here, is the palatine tonsil. And it's kind of hidden by this semilunar fold that sits over top of it. So that's in that oropharynx. And then you also have the palatoglossal. So that's going from the palate to the tongue. So palatoglossal here. Then in the laryngo pharynx, 
moving back here, so laryngopharynx here. And if you slice this open, this is your esophagus right here. So I've just opened that up so that you can see this pharyngoesophageal lymen, which is just the border, the transition between the laryngopharynx and then the esophagus here. And then one last thing to point out that's a little bit tricky. So I'm just going dorsal to the esophagus and peeling that away, that connective tissue, and just breaking it down. And here you have some pharyngeal muscles that are pretty difficult to identify, I think, anyway. And so here, this one would be the cricopharyngeus muscle. The next one, as you move forward towards the nose, is going to be thyropharyngeus muscle. And then here, this one, is going to be hyopharyngeus muscle. So those can be really difficult to distinguish from each other, but they're all sitting right on top, so just dorsal here to the pharynx. And that should be it for lab 22.